Now, lawmakers at the state level have been making moves to strengthen gun safety laws and improve school security. One proposed bill would require gun owners with children in the home to lock up their weapons and ammunition in separate areas, in separate locations. An amendment to a budget bill would set aside funds to change the layout of Rich Neck Elementary. My next guest is involved in both of those legislative efforts. Monty Mason is a Virginia State Senator. Richneck Elementary is in his district. Uh, Senator, thank you so much for joining me this morning. So first off, tell me about these bills and why you think it would make students safer. Well, the budget amendment of $1.5 million is not a way that we typically do it with over $4 billion for the capital and maintenance needs across Virginia. Um, but this school is designed in the 70s and late 60s with an open floor plan in some areas. And so we thought that the budget proposal would show the people at Rich Neck that we are addressing their anxieties and concerns in the short term to try to give them a closed classroom environment in at least uh, some of the areas that do not have it today. The gun legislation is just another step of a common sense measure that shows how to take care of and safely store your gun. Um, I grew up in a home with gun ownership for hunting, for sporting clays, for protection. And this is a best practice in the home I grew up with, making sure that it's in a locked compartment or area that cannot be accessed by someone under 18. But here's the key. Because it's a best practice, it's not going to be onerous for gun owners, but at the same time, it has a notice provision. So in this case, this gun seems to have been bought legally, but what we were missing was in the store, a notice that says, please make sure that if you have children under 18 in your home, that you properly lock and store your guns for their safety and yours. You know, but, you know, the argument is also that, you know, the, the front line of safety it, are, are the staff members, right? The adults in the room. And, you know, as we know, the allegations are that there were there were warnings um, and you had the school administrators failing to act on the warnings um, that this child had a gun. They searched his backpack, but they didn't find the gun that was hidden in there. Uh, what about using funding to to train teachers or staff to be better at detecting students and, and, and uh, pre helping prevent shootings? I mean, nothing's really foolproof, right? Absolutely. And, and that investigation is still ongoing as to how it was handled. And I, I think you're right. We have to have ironclad processes and procedures in place at school districts that make sure everyone is trained, trained properly so that if, in fact, some report or something like this begins to take place in your school, everyone knows how to properly handle it. And I think every school district needs to address that you have to be careful when you start to mandate things like that from Richmond. You want to give your school boards and your localities the opportunity to make sure that their folks and their systems are trained. What we have been asked to do just this week, the Hampton Roads Planning District came to us and as a part of their legislative package, they ask us to promote conflict resolution and mediation skills throughout the course of the matriculation of the student. Would that have helped a sixth grader? We don't know whether they would have understood that, but you can start even before that to let students know that they're going to be conflicts. They're going to be disagreements, but that you can handle them courteously and without violence. You know, I'm a member of the legislature. We agree and disagree hundreds of times a day, 99% yeah. of it courteously. We need to help our children understand how to work through these issues. Um so you were also, you were mentioning this, that you're chief co-patron of, of, of the, a bill that would require gun owners or children in the home to lock up their weapons and ammunition uh, in, in, in separate locations. The family of the six-year-old says he suffers from an acute disability. Um, is the Assembly proposing any legislation around mental health support, either in schools or in homes, and, and, and supporting parents? It, it's a great question. I'm privileged to serve on the Behavioral Health Commission in Virginia, which is a full-time established commission of the legislature. Um, we have been reviewing and working on the mental health crisis that we're seeing, and particularly among children. We know that there are a lot of stress and pressures that came through COVID, but we had issues before. We've just opened a hospital in Norfolk that's going to be 
a, a game changer for us, but we are trying to figure out the ways that we can get the treatments we need to students that they need it, to adults and across the full spectrum. You know, on Wednesday, Rich Neck Elementary began transitioning students and parents and, and staff back into the school at their own pace through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, in anticipation of Monday getting back to school. One critical focus then will be counseling, support, and people available at all times during specific hours for um, scheduled or even after hours as people need help and need discussion. They will need a lot of support as they transition um, back into the classroom. Um, we will be thinking of them and Virginia State Senator Monty Mason, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me, ma'am. Sure thing.